So this is a, a very basic uh, police cap. It's going to have a Welsh South Wales police cap badge. And uh, the, the cap model itself is just kind of a basic thing. Um, importantly, your models need to have um, a UV map. They must be UV mapped. Um, it's a very simple mesh. And it's, uh, as I say, it's got a little, a little cap badge on the front, basically modelled. Um, little crown. You've got the, the, the outer roundel, and you've got some some of the uh, dark star around the outside. Um, areas that are going to have a lot of detail, you need to make sure are quite big on the UV map. So, sort of in the centre, around the badge, it doesn't matter what's behind, because that's going to get lost in detail anyway. So, areas like that need to be relatively big. Um, from Cinema 4D, I always export as an ABC file. I just find it gives you a nice sharp edge. Sometimes when you export from Cinema 4D um, and it's a different type of file, it can cause a few issues, um, especially if it's like an FBX or something like that. Substance Painter, um, import it as you would normally. Um, drop it in 2048, 2048 is quite good. Um, if you go over to the settings uh, and make sure you're on, sorry, you need to go to the shader settings. Um, there's, there's a few different ones you can use here. I like PBR Metal is quite a good one if it's got any opacity. But the sort of default one, it's on PBR Rough, uh, Metal Rough. Even though it's out, out, outdated, it's pretty good. Uh, go into with your export textures when we get to this at the end. Configuration, it needs to be done for uh, Unreal. Unreal Engine 4 is the best option. It gives you the right sort of textures. So um, I've created a couple of elements for this. Um, this model, and those are all based around the cap badge. So, like the, the center part of the cap badge, um, I use a program online. Bring that over uh, to get normal maps. Uh, just a quick rundown of what you would do there is you would import a picture, and it would automatically create the normal map. You can right click and save the image, uh, and that works quite well. I'll go through a few of those in a minute. I always use Illustrator. I find Illustrator the best uh, bit of software for stuff like that. Um, it's also, I find it really, it, you must export things at 300 dpi and you must, it must be um, the normal integ integrals, so 256 by 256, 512 by 512 or something like that. Um, yeah, so this is, this is everything inside. Uh, Substance Painter, I always go in, uh, once I'm done, go to your texture set settings, Fake mesh maps, usually the IDs off, maybe an occlusion and thickness might be off as well, but they'll fix themselves. ID never fixes, it, fixes itself, but it's not an issue at all. Fake your mesh maps, it will actually fake it in, and just give it a couple of minutes to go through all of that. Okay, it doesn't matter that that's a bit off for this, because that will all get hidden in a bit. So, looking at the actual um, texture itself, we need to consider the different parts of the hat. So inside is always red. Uh, this bit underneath the peak is usually green. This bit will be like a glossy sort of patent leather. Um, the top is made out of a very, like a felt material almost. And then you've got the silico, uh, which is the sort of what people call check. It's not a check pattern, it's silico. Uh, and then you've got the actual band there itself. So that's um, sort of areas that we need to concentrate on. Um, it works on a layer system. I'm sure you've used a layer system before. Uh, it's a easy sort of thing to do, same as in Photoshop. You just build up layer upon layer upon layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at some materials to use. Uh, I've downloaded a few from Substance Source, which is pretty good. Kind of main one that I like to use is a, um, a fabric baseball cap. It's pretty good. If you look really deeply at that, it's uh, it's got sort of a, a knitted weave. Um, there's some felt ones. There's there's quite a few decent ones that are out there. Um, and as I say, Substance Source is pretty good for that sort of side of things. Uh, what I'm going to go with first is for the inside. I'm going to use like a, a this fleece colour. And I'll drag that into my layer. And as you can see, it does the whole thing. Now, obviously, that's miles off. And that's no good. What we also want to do is we only want it in this area. So what I'm going to do is a right click over there. Uh, add a black mask and then I can use this tool here 
um, it, which basically you fill the polygon area that you want to use. So with that clicked on, I can either do it via the, the UV map here or directly onto the model. It's much easier to do it via there. As you can see, um, I've got the whole area covered. I've accidentally selected this piece here. If you press X on the keyboard, you swap. So it's on or off. You can see down here, on or off. Um, and that's via X. So you can see that's pretty decent. What I want to do is just going to select that. It's already a pretty decent color for what I need it to be. But as you can imagine, it's scaled up massively, um, way too big. So I'm going to scale that down to something like that, really, because it is a really fine weave on the inside. Right, that's the inside pretty much done. Um, I quite like that texture for the top. That would probably be quite good for the top. Okay, So I can duplicate the layer. This is a sort of a cheaty way to do it. Uh, grab that, clear the mask. Now, my advice when you're doing stuff like this um, is to give it a stupid colour that stands out uh, before you actually go in and make it the colour you want it to be. So for the top, I do want it to be black. Uh, I'm going to make it like bright green so I can just see exactly where it is. Um, and then I can tell it where I want it to be and where I don't want it to be. So I want it to be all, all on the top, as you can see. Uh, it's going to be most of the inside. And it's going to be a fair few areas where it's going to be. To be honest with this, I could flip it and make it a white mask and then just paste out the areas I don't want it to be. That would be just as easy. So if I, I'll clear the mask, if I just add a white mask, it can go everywhere. And then I can um, just select the areas where I want to avoid it. So the cat badge, um, the inside part there. I don't really want it to be on the peak, which is there. Let's come in and clear up a few parts there. Now I can actually paint onto the model as well. Um, the only issue I've found is if I do um, click and hold and drag, it will go underneath as well. It will be, be literally all the way to infinity. And I don't really want that on the whole model. It's all right to do it here on this particular part, but that is really annoying occasionally, and it will go all the way through. Um, as I say, this part underneath is eventually actually going to be green, not this shade of green, and it's going to be like a, it's made out of like a peeled leather sort of look. And I can get that in a second. If you bear with me, I'll show you through that. So just going to cover all these polys here. Um, just get them the right colour. So one of the problems I find with um, Substance Painter is get to a stage where you think, oh, this will be perfect. This particular texture will be perfect. And then you try and get it in and you struggle with scale or or whatnot but hopefully this should give you a little bit of guidance i've had to muddle through with a lot of my learning hopefully this, this should give you a good idea so that's effectively the entire cap you can also do sections um depending on how you've made your model so for example that is a, a, a separate part so it's it's pretty good there so you see how it's done the whole model there but Effect, that can be quite effective as well. If you've made your model with different um, groups, quite, it is quite good. For some reason, it's um, lost a bit on there. I can there go back and paint. I think it might be uh, sharing some, some um, UV space there. No major drama, to be honest with you, because it's all going to be a relatively similar colour anyway. And for the scale that we're working on in, in this, it's, um, yeah, it's no biggie. I've got the red underneath. I've got that on, a, on the above. I can now go in, I can have a look at that and say, right, I want that to be black. Now, if you look up really close, you've got a really nice sort of texture there. Okay, so I am going to change that. I'm going to make it on there so it's not white. I've showed you how to use the polygon tools, but you can also paint your um, map on there as well if you want to. Uh, you can paint that on as so. And I can paint it directly onto the model as well. A bit mental, just uh, stroke back a touch. Yeah. Um, so I want to do a nice shiny material for the um, peak around here. So what I'm going to do is uh, do, do always do a fill. Add your black mask. Um, I want that to be basically this whole area here. Um, we'll clear this up in a minute. 
and, and again, I can just go through. Again, make that a stupid color that just completely stands out, uh, and you can go in back on the, the, the UV map, pick the areas you want to do. You can kind of back on there. Easy way is just to go around and have a look at the different parts. Just here. Pretty much a few different points in there, as I say, still hidden. Again, I like to just go over like that. I just know basically which ones they are that I'm missing. Um, and then I can come back in, see if they're on here. Oh, there we go. They're all there. So effectively, I can just kind of run across. Much easier to do it on the UV map with certain, certain things. Um, Go, something like that. Uh, there's a few few little polys missing there. Fill those in. Okay, perfect. And what we're going to do is we're also going to include this because it's the same sort of material. Uh, right. So this going through the sort of menu I've got here of, of the different um, things. There's a plastic PVC which is pretty good. You can see it's got the nice sort of shine on there. And I can fiddle around with that down the bottom here. I can change the roughness, make it really shiny, um, make it really matte as well. And if I wanted to make it more metal, I could do that. I'm going to turn the metal down and I'm going to make it reasonably shiny like that. Change the color down to a nice black. Let's have another look. Do I need that to be a bit shinier? I could keep it really shiny like that, or I could just take it down and up. At the moment, it looks like some kind of 1920s prison officer's cap. That's not a problem. We can. Uh, we can sort that out in a bit. I've still got the nice uh, red colour inside. I'm going to now look at doing the green on the inside. So I'll, I'll do another fill, add uh, a black mask again, uh, and then look at which polys I actually want to paint. Now with the oh, 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 with the cap, it's not necessarily the whole thing uh, with the green on the inside. I know it doesn't sort of extend all the way up to the top. Um, it doesn't extend up to these polys, so I need to sort of work on that a bit. Sort of angle that there, to there. If you click and drag on the UV map, obviously there's nothing behind, so it does make it a lot easier to just paint things on as quick as you can. Right, and same sort of on that side. Um, right there. Getting a bit ahead of myself there. Um, have a look there and see where they are in the actual model. So I've not made the greatest UV map on this. Uh, it was very quick, and as you can see, it's put a lot of poly sort of in the middle of nowhere. I'm not massively bothered with this. Um, I'm assuming you know, if you're watching this, you know how to do um, a better UV map. If so, fine, crack on. Do what you need to do, but. Just for the sake of this, it makes it a lot easier. So back, getting back to the actual material I want in here, it's um, kind of like a bitty sort of texture. So I've got a nice plastic grainy sort of thing there. Now you're looking at that thinking, it's absolutely shocking. I'll change this to the sort of bright shade of green, quite a dark green. There. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the old um, scale down, sort of there. So you've got that kind of inside of the peak cap. That's pretty good. It's pretty decent for what we want. Now, if you notice there, I've, I've gone over the top. So what I need to do, press me the X button again, okay, and that will get deleted. So, so far, we're looking quite good. Now, depending on the scale of your actual hat, depends on what you might want to do with regards to uh, stitching and stuff like that. But we'll get onto that in a second. Um, obviously, I need now to look at the silicone tartan that goes around the outside of the hat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a texture, a fill texture again, and there's going to be a black one and a white one. So this is going to be the white one. I'll keep it on that nice grey colour because it helps me to see. And then um, I'll create another one in a second for the uh, the other side. Um, so it's best to start at the back. It's on a, a cap. That's the way it sort of works. So I can I know that I need to do effectively like this um, and go around the entire hat. Now, this isn't what it's going to look like. We're going to make it a lot better. If you cock up, again, it's just a case of um, 
Control Z showing you through. Um, as you're going round, this sort of thing is, is extremely time consuming. There is a there may be an easier way of doing it, but if there is, I'm not aware. But to be honest with you, when you're doing stuff like this, it's it's reasonably therapeutic. Um, and it's you know, these, these if you're if you're if you're in a position where you're paying for um substance painter and you're watching really basic tutorials like this it, what you're doing should be a labor of love anyway um there we go keep going round it doesn't even matter if it's an uneven amount of silicone silicone when you get to the front because at the end of the day i've seen police acts where the join is, is at the back that's where the join is sometimes it might be white here and white here if it is if that's the case it's no drama it's no big in okay just keep going around painting in just dropping into those uvs where you need them to be um shoot around the back of your your cat badge there you're not really going to get behind now i could have had this as a separate entity um to sort of i could if this was a separate model within the model i could have turned it off but i didn't um and i didn't do that for a reason i didn't really depending on what what sort of program you're pulling this into depends on how well that works so i've left it as the same model for now uh, but it's no it's no big deal you can still sort of get through there Keep going round. Doing um I find that doing items like um clothing, what I would consider to be organic, clothing people, things like that, is by far the most difficult stuff you can do. Substance painter works really well with that sort of stuff. There's some fantastic bits and bobs in there, especially if you use it in uh sort of hand in hand with Z brush, something like that. You can get some really fantastic results. And to be blunt, with with minimum effort most of the time. Um, but when you come when it comes to do things like weapons and things like that or vehicles, um, I really enjoy using um, substance painter to sort of push through, get some fantastic results. With I, I, I like I don't like the term minimum effort, but it, it really is simple. It makes things so much better. You don't even really need to have decent UV maps as I've demonstrated today. Um, UV maps can be pretty shoddy, but they still still do a decent job and look at that it fits reasonably well with what we wanted to do there so oh, i did that yeah okay just get rid of that fine so i've got silica all the way around perfect what i do now is i'm actually texture the inside there so i'm going to grab that now i spoke to you earlier on about the uh fabric base now this as i say this is a fantastic bit of kit i'm going to add that there um i'm going to make it really nice bright white and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to scale it again And I'm going to rotate it so that it's running up. You see how the lines are running up like they would on the actual cap. And I'm going to scale it so it's nice and there we go. But now I'm going to go down a touch more. Something like that. Okay, and what I'm going to do as well is uh, in the technical parameters here, I'm going to change the um the height position. As you can see it's pushed it out such so go in and it goes in or i can go out i'm going to go slightly out so i want it to effectively stand out a touch once i'm happy with that i'm going to grab hold of him and duplicate the layer again now usually i'd have all these uh label, labeled up so this will be obviously the uh inside of cap cap base color uh that's going to be the peak uh, that's going to be the uh, inner peak. So, do that, and it's going to be uh, silico white. And this one's going to be silico black. Um, so I've duplicated the silico there. So I'm going to re remove the mask, clear mask, um, and change the color of this. Like I say, get some really stupid better color. And now, unfortunately, it starts all over again. Um, back into your thing, your um, 
mask, start painting where you want the black bit to go. At the moment, it's looking like some kind of glorified security guard because I've chosen to use the black, uh, the red instead of black. Just give it a, once we've gone round. Now, if I chose to copy, I could copy the mask and invert it. Issue with that is it will invert to the entire model and I don't really have the um, sort of patience. I could, again, kind of go into here and just pop it along there. That's beautiful for, in fact, I could just, Silly me, I could have done this for the behind the cat badge as well, really. Um, you can just sort of pop it in here. Quicker if you want to drag it. it, takes a little bit less time. As you can see, I've missed a, a white spot out there. One I can just go in there very quickly, pop him in, go back to what I was doing. If I had more time, uh, I would have created a better UV map and had this silico so it was next to each other properly uh, in a straight line, and that would have made things even easier painting directly onto the UV map. Um, let's get these sort of painted in, got a bit over there, just exit off, press X again, it, it inverts your, your painting tool. Any more, any more, a couple up here. I assume this is all behind the cat badge. Beautiful, we can get in there and actually get that done. Back to Montenegro, fill in and him. And we've got the back to do. The, the mesh will only appear if you're in this. Um, this mode over here, this uh, polygon fill, and then you're selecting the actual polygon rather than the mesh. As I say, the mesh is a kind of entire area. So if you were to if I go back into here, if this part here was a completely separate model, in fact, you can see it's if I double click it, it sort of selects the whole area. So should I go back into here, that should be considered one area. That sort of uh, inner circle of the cat pad should be one sort of area. We'll have a, have a gander at that in a second. All right, so that's that. Pretty good. Be happy with that. So I've got some inner parts here uh, that look a bit shoddy. So all I need to do is remove them from the map. It's just where I've copied some over. Uh, there's been a bit of a, a, a misfire a couple of places. All sorted, all fixed, uh, including behind the cat badge. I'll go back to this, change them to black, um, and then go in. So what I want to do now is I've got a good, decent black colour there and a decent white colour on the silico. I need to go back to the base colour of the hat. And um, as any policeman will tell you, things get faded. Fade that up slightly, just give it a little bit of a lighter colour. And there we go. Maybe a bit too light. Maybe this uh, this officer's had a bit, bit more experience than we uh, give him credit for. Um, so yeah, that's that so far. Uh, these are the base colours of the hat, so I could group these together. Let's peek to cap base. There we go. Um, and now we look at the cap badge. Cap badge is going to be uh, based on the uh, South Wales Police cap badge. As a senior officer's one, I think the colour. Uh, I think the colour makes it a bit different. So it's all going to be a nice silvery colour. What we're going to do is, um, again, we've selected a fill, a nice shiny sort of colour down the bottom would be perfect. Nice iron or something like that. Um, we, can, we can just drop these straight in as well. Um, and then just add a black mask. Select the area we want, which is around here. As you can see, it got rid of the nonsense that we saw above. Um, and I can I can change this again. I can make this more shiny, less shiny. Let me look at that picture again. It is quite shiny. And again, you can take it out or you can add the metallic. Change the colour of it, the base colour. It's quite good to be honest with you. So that's that's the uh, the cat badge now. I'm not really happy with that as it is. So I'm going to do a couple of cheats. 
I like Adobe Illustrator, I'm a big fan of Adobe Illustrator. So what I do is um, looking at this whole area here, if I print screen, open up my Adobe Illustrator. I remember I said that things need to be 512 by 512. I can, um, sorry, I can paste. I don't think it prints screens. Uh, print screen. And then um, I should be able to paste in there. Um, as I say, it's a bit of a cheat. I can then see uh, the inside area of the of the, the badge there, and I can see what I need to do, where I need to put things. Now, I've prepared some stuff from before. I've got the inside of the badge already done. Um, so all I need to really position, this is something else, something completely different, is this bit of text here. I'll double check it's right. Yeah, it might not be perfect, but I'm happy with it for the time being. Um, I'll create outlines as well, because it makes things a lot easier. So I'll grab that. Drop that into the center there, so I know it's the right size. That's how I'm gonna, no it's not. Okay, so that's roughly how I'm gonna position that. Um, it's gold text and the bit in the middle is gold as well so that makes things a lot easier for me because i can actually uh, do the two parts together so what i'll do is i'll grab that there and i've got a drawing underneath which is here of the cat badge i'm going to bring him to the front i am going to scale him down a touch that he fits how I want him to fit, so sort of, sort of there. Um, what's that scale? That scale's pretty good. That, don't need that. Group that together, back in on the middle of the page. Now I can change the scale, it doesn't actually matter. I'm in that sort of size, and he must be on a back, black, sorry, background. So I'll create a black background, center it, send it to the back, change all my text to white. And everything with a bit of white. Uh, I can then go uh, export this uh, as a PNG file. I'm going to call this Headloo Central. Uh, Central. I'm going to use my artboard. Must use your artboard. Export that. I always go with 300 DPI. Now that uh, website we discussed earlier on. Um, it's a good idea to to get that bookmarked. Um, select the artwork I want, invert the height, always invert the height on this, and I can save that. Uh, yeah, and then I can um, sort of position it in the right place. If this is, uh, sorry, so it's there. Um, You can see it should look like the areas that you want to come out towards you are the areas that are sort of pushed in. Um, and I will plonk that into the elements folder here. I will rename this because this is a this is going to be effectively a um, Normal map file, so headloom cat badge central normal because this is a normal map file. Uh, it's all going to be the same color. So, what I need to do now is go back into my Illustrator file and turn this into uh, just a, a white only file. So, um, I can release my mask on there, which I created earlier on, get rid of the that. Get rid of the background and I can export that as the alpha file. Again, make sure you use your artboards. So uh, there's two files that I'm going to export into Substance, and that's going to be the alpha file and the normal map. I don't need to worry about the other one at the moment. Pop them in like so. Make sure you call the normal map a texture and the alpha an alpha. Now, you import it to, if you're going to be using this over and over again, then you'll want to uh, 
um, import it as onto your shelf. Your shelf basically means everything you do. Um, I always import into if, if I know I'm going to use it into shelf, but for this, it's just the current session uh, and I'll import it there. I can effectively stamp this into the actual file. So, what I'll do is on the tools, I just grab anything, any old thing that I've been using. Um, I've got an old version of a cat badge I've used for something else. Um, I'll create a new layer and then um, I can start looking at where what it actually looks like. Base color, I'm going to turn that to a nice bronze, uh, a nice gold sort of color, something like that. Um, height, I want it to be sort of sticking out a little bit towards us. Um, normal map, make sure I've got the right normal map selected. Alpha, make sure I've got the right alpha selected. I know you can see um, as I paint it, it should, uh, should make a bit of sense. Uh, roughness, I'm going to take the roughness off because it's quite shiny, as you saw. And I'm going to turn the metallic up. There we go, we get a nice sort of, um, sort of goldy sort of colour. Let like me scale a bit. So that it all fits in nicely. Oh, and it's it upside down. I can change that. I can change the way that uh, it looks at things anyway. I can change that to UV. And there we go. Pops on there nicely. So a couple of things I'll still need to do to this is obviously the background there is black and red. So what I'll do is I'll create a couple of fill layers, but I'll put them underneath the layer with the uh, cap of badge details. So this one is going to be, uh, if I look at my materials, I want it to be a nice shiny sort of uh, enamel looking thing. Again, my PVC would work quite well for that. I'll put on my black mask again, um, and I want it to be all along here. Look at the way it picks up behind. I think it looks really good. Uh, it's picking up all that detail. Oh, you went a bit far there. There we go, get that sorted. Change that to a nice deep red. Something like that. Now the height I can turn off because it doesn't really matter. You know, it's sort of sucked out a bit. Um, I'm going to create one more fill layer. Add a black mask to that. This is going to be the back of the cat badge there. Well, I might have changed yet. There we go. Put it, make sure you work out your layers nicely. Um, I know this is a senior officer's badge. I believe the normal PCs have a blue colour, um, but I'll need to confirm that. I want to make sure I change that again to the same sort of file. Um, turn the height off again. Oops, spun that around when I didn't need to. Uh, and we'll change that to a nice blue. Better blue. Um, so yeah, that's basically that so far. What I also like to do, because I'm a little bit extra, is create another layer and then just get myself a nice little, um, a nice little round sort of something nice and round. Um, what I can do is make it an alpha, turn everything off apart from my height, make my height a little bit like that. Um, it should be a nice round sort of. Um, a nice little round brush, short size, something like that. It's got a, a normal on it, so we get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Just the height. You now, just the height. Okay. And what we can do is we can go into the actual um, thing here, and it, you know you can be a bit. A little bit creative. Obviously, this is a, a queen's crown. We want to make sure it's nice and decorated. This uh, there is much easier ways of doing this um, in Illustrator with regards to uh, drawing them up, stuff like that. At this level of detail, it really, really doesn't matter too much. Again, you can do something like that, um, something like that over there, from there to there. You hold shift does a nice little um sort of joins all the way up 
thing. So again, there's there, there's there. Outside, uh, usually there's a nice little uh, weird pattern thing in there with the uh, uh, just getting a bit sort of, sort of creative here. As creative as I want to be, really. Um, and remember, obviously, you can you can uh, make it higher for certain parts. If you want to go in and say, actually, I want to details along there, another detail there, something in the middle. I oh, know I get a bit just a, a little bit creative. It just makes the crown uh, distance look a, a little bit better. You don't have to do that. Just be mucking around. As you can see, before that, if you look at it from a distance, I've got a pretty plain little looking crown there. If I turn that on at the distance, you've got that sort of nice sort of look. Um, crown details. I can also do another layer, and if I wanted to, I can look at some uh, stitching. Uh, you've got some decent sort of setup tools down here. Uh, I've got loads of. Um, bits that I usually use, but I could, you've got the metal stitches there, obviously it doesn't require metal stitches, but I can turn those around, if I get the right size first, no, no. if I get the right sort of size, uh, I can angle them so it sort of follows the pattern, uh, change the jitter, I don't really want much jitter, uh, but increase the spacing, increase the spacing a bit more, so there's a bit more of a and then uh, turn off the metallic because obviously this is looking. I will make it black. Uh, turn off the um, metallic so it doesn't seem to be metallic at all. There we go. You've got a nice looking stitch. So get that spacing down a touch. Uh, and again, if you wanted to, you can just kind of kind of follow this along. I'm holding shift as I go through. It's sort of following it along. Now the problem here is uh, potentially your, your UV map might not be that detailed enough. But as you can see, it's not too bad. Um, uh, it's a bit thick. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm not actually happy with that. That's a bit thick. I think I could probably go down to sort of that sort of size, maybe Maybe in the middle, so what I can do in that new one, um, that's a bit better. Try and get that little little bit of detail in. Follow it all the way around. Yeah, something like that. Um, final little detail is. Um, on the chin strap, this is the chin strap by the way, there's a uh, a nice uh, button on the end. I've got a nice button that I use when I do shirts and stuff, but I'm not going to use the in the same way. I'm just going to use the alpha for it. Uh, and all that's going to be is I'm going to make it a little bit smaller because it goes right on the end here. Well, that sort of size. I'm going to take the, I'm going to make the color black. I'm going to make it as Come out as far as it will come out, so as high as it can be. Uh, roughness is going to be turned all the way down. Uh, I'm going to plop that there like that. Go to the other side and uh, plop that there like that. It doesn't matter that I put it in the same um, uh, same layer as the stitching. You can do either or. So that is basically it for now. Uh, you've got a decent hat. The inside's all there, um, reasonably low poly, and um, that's it really. Uh, I always export my meshes and models the same way. So I find my folder, I will always put a folder called mesh, and I can easily work things out. Uh, this is going to be um, head loop hat. So, uh, export my texture. As I say, Unreal Engine 4, very important. Change it to the right place. New folder, text or texture, uh, open them up, 
set the fold up. Uh, I hope this is um this has helped. Uh, please uh, feel free to give me some feedback.